Hello, hello, this is the Digital Loop, Season 2, Episode 20, a very special Digital Loop, because the World Cup is over. We have nothing else to watch on, on television anymore, so you should watch actually our YouTube channel. It's the best thing to do for the entire summer. Hello, Ivan, how are you? Hola, Paul, ¿cómo estás? Aquí en una edición muy especial de The Digital Loop. Tenemos a nuestro gran amigo... Uh, what are you laughing? <laughs> ah, sorry. Okay, oh, man, I, I got my stuff. Guys, we have a huge show today. We have a huge guest today. We have Ramon de Leon. Ramon, wow, all the way from Chicago. Hello, Ramon, how are you? I am doing. Yes, Ramon is here with us. So it's a very special edition. We are... Uh, we were planning to do it in Spanish, but you know, Paul is still his Spanish is no no mucho bueno, uh, so we we will stick to English. <laughs> okay, sounds like a plan. <laughs> Go ahead. So maybe I've got to introduce you in two seconds for for those who don't know you. I don't know how they don't know, Ramon. I mean, if you've ever been to our conference, I hope to to God that you've actually seen Ramon on stage. He's the best, being the first on the show because he's so energetic that he wakes an entire audience up. I've seen him uh, twice, I think, at the web, and uh, I've seen videos. You can you can check. We'll we'll display all these links after the show on the on the the web page. But he's quite amazing. So he was for a very long time. I, I could even say he was he's the inventor of the domino effect, uh, though that was made already before, because he was a very successful owner of a franchise of Domino's Pizza in Chicago. I think it was seven, and you'll correct me afterwards if I'm wrong. Uh, using, and you were one of the first one using actually the power of social to actually make it a very, very and highly successful uh, franchise. He moved on recently, maybe a year ago or something. He works now at a, a company called Ry Rise Interactive, if I'm not correct, so I'm looking at my, my notes, as a, a senior social strategist, and he is always, obviously, all around the world doing speeches, these kind of speeches I just mentioned. So. Tell, tell us a little bit more. You, one of the things I really love about you, be, be, beyond your amazing energy on stage, is that you keep telling to people, you, you're making them real. You know, it's, there's a lot of people fluffing about, oh, social media and how we do social strategy. You've actually done it. You've actually used the power of social to make something very, very successful. Uh, so I don't want you to give us tips. I want you to tell you the way you say to audiences, how, why you believed in so much, and how successful it was. But just think about this, Paul. 25 years ago, being in business, not having computers, not having digital tools, in a restaurant, in a pizza delivery restaurant, the only arsenal that we had when we would come up to a customer's door, I had their name, phone number, and I knew what they wanted for dinner. That's it. I had no other data on them because everything was manual and that wasn't being put into anything it was just written down on a piece of paper so when we would come up to a customer's door and this was when I was a pizza delivery driver I had about two or three minutes at the customer's door we created a memorable experience and because we did that every single every single time and with every single order without digital tools when the digital tools became available you know although it makes it easy if you weren't doing it before, you're not, you're, you're not going to break that habit and all of a sudden start doing it today. So that's the reason that we were so successful here in Chicago, is that to outshine our competitors, we made sure that we really talked to our customers face to face. We let them get to know the face behind the logo, especially when we launched and we pioneered online ordering in 1997. 1997. So 1997, there was no hashtag back then, right? Oh, no. But you know what, what was really cool is that what we did use is that we used ICQ Instant Messenger that eventually became AOL Instant Messaging. And what we would do is when a customer would order online, we would send them an instant message. So what we wanted to do is let customers know where their pizza was. But what we started to realize was that customers were actually wanting to talk to us during the order process. like. How's my pizza doing? Is it almost ready? And, and the thing what we would do is we would actually talk with the customers in real time via instant messaging while they were waiting for their pizzas. 1997, 98, and before 2000. That, you know, when, when Twitter was invented, we already had years under our belt of talking to customers in 20 and 30 characters. So Twitter's invented, and I'm like, this is perfect. But we actually felt challenged at first because we said, wow, now we have 140 characters. 
what else can I say if I'm used to speaking in 20 and 30 characters? My brand competitors were thinking, how could we possibly say what we want to say in only 140 characters? So we were able to hit the ground running. Awesome. That's really impressive. But then you moved to, did you, was it only using, because uh, I've heard you many times speaking, uh, as I said before, and one of the things that you've always in, emphasized is, was that uh, the power, beyond the power of words, I mean, you, you, you keep saying that you know, people like to share, share their lives, share their moments, but the power of, beyond power of words, you have the power of video. And I know you use video uh, a lot yourself. Uh, and you and you did encourage your your customers to actually use video. Do you so do you, what? Can you tell us a bit more about video? See, the whole thing is, is that I kept I kept thinking. You know, even though through the digital tools we're able to express emotion in words, how how cool would it actually be if we could actually show people the emotion that we have and how happy we are to have them as a customer? And when we would send video thank yous from the store to, to consumers, and the emotion being how happy we were to have our customers as customers. Because there is no business that, that exists without customers. So you might as well love your customers and treat them like friends. This is, this is actually something you said. I, I'm going to quote you. Sorry for guys who are looking at the video and not listening at a podcast. Uh, you said, uh, I think it was during one of your talks, I had taken notes back then, but I don't actually remember which talk it was. I'm so sorry. You said, my goal is to inspire you, inspire you and uh, I'm worried about my customers being successful because if they are, I am too. Uh, and you, then you said, I want, uh, we should let our customers speak, let them speak their mind, empower their mind. Uh, and if they, let, let, let your customers basically love you and then they will love you back. Is it, is it, is it something that you're still saying today? Absolutely. I mean, because think about, think about this, right? How loyal am I to my customer? And not just focus on customers showing loyalty to me. And the thing is that when you, when you find that emotional connection with your customers, your, 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 your customers are going to want to share their experiences that they're having with you. So then you, then you become challenged to create positive experiences that becomes incredible, incredible word of mouth at scale. Just think, I had six restaurants here in Chicago, and if we did not constantly demonstrate loyalty and love on the global level, you know, where there's people all over the world who knew about our restaurants and would say, when I go to Chicago, I want to stop by one of those Domino's pizza stores that's run by Ramon. Ivan? Awesome. I mean, I, I mean, this is something that is, is uh, you know, business 101. And yes. uh, I, I think that is fant fascinating the fact that most people are, are trying to catch up the new thing, right? You know, there is, there is these new technologies, there is social media, there is uh, uh, now we have the opportunity to, to talk to people so we can put our ads there and we can send the messages. And what they don't understand that at the end of the day is about building the relationships between you know, uh, the, the, the organization and its users and its customers. And, and, and the fact that these tools help us do that, that's what, that's what at the end of the day is going to win. And you are one of the first ones to actually implement this way of thinking. Absolutely. And the reason that that happened is that it's something that I learned from my mother. My mom would take me door to door selling Avon when I was seven years old. And I could never understand why she spent so much time talking to the customers, talking to the neighbors. And it, after 20, 25 minutes of just, hi, how are you? How you doing? How have you been? What's going on? What are you making for dinner? Then the final minutes was, here's the, here's the Avon book with the, with the specials and, and my phone number. Let me know if you would like to order anything. And then I asked my mom one day, I said, why, do, why don't we just go drop off the books and we can go to more houses? She said, son, I'm not the only person that sells Avon in this neighborhood. I need my, my neighbors and my customers to get to know me, like me, and trust me so that they can buy from me. You tell that to a seven-year-old kid, it, it goes like this. But once I was in business and I was dealing with customers on a daily basis and face-to-face, -face, I totally understood what my, what my mom told me. And I wasn't selling pizza in Chicago. I said, this is what I need to do.
Yeah, so being basically really being close to your customers and being having this constant interaction. And let me let, let me remind a lot of people because some people assume sometimes when they see you maybe less now that you are not at Domino's anymore, but they almost assume that you were so powerful in actually delivering the message for for your franchise that you were basically uh, overtaking the brand. I mean, people really assume that you were in charge of the brand itself, Domino's Pizza, but you were really only, uh, and I say only not in a negative way, but you were dealing with your own shops and yes. your own uh, restaurants in Chicago. But did the brand itself, so did Domino's Pizza, and I don't want to get into anything controversial here, but did the brand learn from you? Did they actually take some of your lessons back into their policies and how they should actually oh, include okay. maybe other franchisees or even their global communication, or at least U.S. communication. Did they actually learn things from you? We were using the tools of social media since before the word existed. We had a Twitter account and we had a Facebook presence at least a year before Domino's. And when they were starting to use the tools of social media, the first thing that they were obviously going to do is they looked at how I was using it in Chicago. And that was the basis for them to first to, to create the social media guidelines. There was things that, that I was doing that they liked. There was things that I was doing that they didn't like, that they included and they kind of banned, which is okay. Although I didn't have an open dialogue with Domino's Pizza, I am sure that they looked at my efforts and they, they took some of the, there was some very key learnings with regards to being real, accessible, transparent, and in real time, and tried to implement it at scale at their level. Oh, that was a very good answer. Uh, Ivan, go ahead. Awesome, awesome. I mean, uh, and, and this is probably what, again, most of the organizations, when they are thinking social media, they are thinking tools, they are thinking programs, they are thinking platforms, and they are not thinking social, they are not thinking people. So yeah. the fact that you, you, you started that, I guess that that's, that's that be the very solid foundation for Domino's to actually start, you know, on the right track. You know, they didn't start just by putting content, meaningless content, but by actually doing something that was relevant for, for, for their customers. And, and that's, I guess, why, you know, we celebrate Domino's as, a, as an organization that has done very well on social media. Oh, absolutely. And uh, a, good, a good turning point was in April of 2009, and we had a couple of team members out of North Carolina who thought it was going to be a prank by doing some horrendous things to food and putting it up on, on YouTube. Domino's got blasted on social media and didn't even have a Twitter account. But just imagine being in a social media crisis with no, with no Twitter ID to be able to respond. But since we had already been on, on Twitter pretty close to a year, I was responding to all of the negative content that was being generated about Domino's within Chicago and letting people know that what happened did not happen in, in Chicago. No, I was the face behind, behind the logo. I was ultimately the responsible person. The community saw what was happening, and everyone that, that we had helped, everyone saw what was happening, and, and our fans and followers came to our defense. They, they said, you know what? What happened was an isolated situation in another, par in another part of the United States. This was in Chicago, and this isn't how, how, how Ramon runs his pizza shops. So what they did was they were defending us online. And we had a lot of people that said, that said, you know what, what we need to do is we need to make a pizza purchase and let everybody know that it's safe to buy from Domino's. And during the social media crisis, we had a 6.34% sales increase during those three weeks of the social media crisis. The social media crisis was so big that the CEO of Domino's Pizza in Australia he had to go on morning talk shows to defend the, the practices of Domino's Pizza in Australia and alienate himself from what happened in North Carolina. And so that's how big this crisis was. So the fact that we had a sales increase during a global, you know, stay away from Domino's moment really speaks words with regards to customer loyalty. And when you show loyalty to your customers, they will be there for you when you need them. Ivan? Awesome, awesome, awesome. Um, I have a question connected with, with, with you because you, you develop all these, all these policies, you develop all these creative uh, solutions at Domino's, and then you exponentially grew to become a, a, a world, a globally recognized uh, a social media evangelist. How yeah. do you go into that direction? How do you end up 
you know, speaking at the web mm -hmm. uh, 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 and being recognized worldwide as, as an ambassador of, you know, the power of social media. In 2008, I realized that I needed to get some social media education. And I found a, a conference that was going on at, at, at UCLA. And it was called Gravity Summit. So yes, yes, it was Hollywood and there was brands there. But it was the first conference that I even heard of about social media. So I attend the event and I'm seeing what DirecTV and what Sony, what Yahoo. And I'm seeing what they're doing. And I'm think, in my mind, I'm thinking, man, in Chicago, I'm running circles around these guys. I'm sharing my story in the break with other attendees and people are really intrigued by, wow, you Domino's guy doing this in Chicago? I said, absolutely. So there was, uh, it was a part of a series and a few months later they had invited me to speak at, at, uh, at Stanford at Gravity Summit. And I, was, I shared a 15 minute section on what we were doing with social media in Chicago that just totally blew everybody's mind and I mean I just jacked up the intensity and I was just being me. In the audience was the founder of Marketing Profs. Hands me his business card and says you're speaking at my event in Chicago in October. And I'm like wow. wow. Yeah. So I'm, I'm excited that, I, that, I, that I'm going to get a free pass. <laughs> and there's, once I'm there, I meet even more speakers. I, I remember there is where I met Mari Smith and I met Alan Schoenberger the, from Corporate Communications of the Chicago Mercantile Exchange. And I met a lot of you know, bigger people, even, even bigger people in the audience that started inviting me to either speak at their event or wanting to interview me for a blog. The epitome of it all, August 2009, Gravity Summit goes to Harvard and is streamed live on CNN.com, and I'm one of the speakers. MC Hammer, Gary Vaynerchuk, Southwest Airlines, Dunkin' Donuts, and some pizza guy from Chicago. <laughs> <laughs> but from, then, from then on, I got on a lot of people's radar. <laughs> but that, then you kind of stepped up your game, because now you actually not only speak yeah. it, it, it in the U.S., but you also speak, I mean, you moved on from Domino's, as I said, in the beginning of, of the show, you now at Rise Interactive, if I yeah. say that correctly. Yeah. It's also based in Chicago, I believe. And so I, I've seen you because you keep tweeting and you have that uh, hashtag of yours, hashtag yeah. on wow, so it's very easy to actually track you. Uh, you've been doing that. Oh, hold on. You have that on your oh, wow. t-shirt. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Nice. <laughs> oh. You're, that's amazing. That's uh, a pro right there. That's a pro that, right there. That's fantastic. So, uh, and you are basically, so you are now basically delivering these set of messages uh, for Rise Interactive all around the world. I've seen you in Asia. I've seen you uh, here in, in Europe uh, many times. Obviously, you still do that in the U.S. So is that something that you try to actually teach to uh, audiences and, uh, and other companies, basically? Because it seems, you know, a lot of people, what you're saying now, obviously we're in 2014, we're not in 2007, or not even like 1987. What you're saying now seems obvious. A lot of people keep saying that. You read a lot of articles, people talking about that. You see, of course, blogs, etc., etc. But then... When you, dip, you dive in, you realize that to this day, a lot of brands are still not applying these recipes. A lot of the brands are still uh, trying to figure out exactly what they should do with their social presence. Uh, we're not even talking about the fails. I'm even talking about a simple strategy. So is that what you try to do? Is that what you, beyond your energy, is that what you try to deliver as a message uh, uh, when you, you travel around the world? Is actually to teach them the, the, what it could be the basics, what basically your mom told you. Is that what you're trying to do? Exactly. Uh, you know, absolutely, because there's so many things that are common sense, like like drink like like drinking enough enough water. Yeah, we all know that you need to talk to your customers, and I bring real time, very concrete, motivational examples that grabs people's attention. What I do is I flip the the funnel up upside down. You know, I look for that for that one or that few people that can really grab your experience and share it with the world. And you know that's the thing where where I, I I think we've been very successful in getting people's attention. Ivan, I, I have the impression that a lot of people are looking into what's next. They are not paying attention to the fundamentals. What you're saying is 
this is 101 and you are not doing that. What advice would you give to these people that instead of trying to figure out what's the next technology, what's the next platform, what's the next uh, new shiny toy, what they should do now? Okay. I always use the example of some of the most powerful tools that we have right now. Instagram as an example or maybe, or maybe, maybe even Twitter. So what are you doing with those tools now? Because if there is some new phenomenal tool that comes out later, that's not going to fuel your, avail your, your, your opportunities for tomorrow because you'll have no muscle memory. You'll have no, no, no habits uh, placed because all you're doing is just waiting. Ha. Huh. That's actually very good. <laughs> I don't really see that happening in organization, especially with the inertia that uh, is going on. Yvan, do you want to ask a, a last question to, to Ramon? Yeah, I mean, pretty much uh, just wanted, wanted to, to thank Ramon again for, for having the opportunity to, to join us here at the Digital Loop. We've been wanting to have Ramon for a long, long time. Uh, we met the three of us at the web, and it's a great pleasure to have the opportunity to have Ramon with us today. Um, just uh, what are your plans? What are you planning to do next? And for all the people that are, or are, are you know, maybe they've been living under a rock and they don't know where to find you, uh, where can they reach you? Yeah, the, the easiest place I live on Twitter, Ramon underscore my last name, De Leon, and I'm sure you're going to splash the link out there. Exactly. I'm, al I'm always just a send button away. <laughs> and are you, are you traveling towards Europe a little bit or this, this coming month? Uh, no, not not uh, not not this uh, not this month. Summer summer is a is a oh, slowdown. Um, you know things will pick up in the latter part of September, but hopefully we'll we'll connect in uh, we'll connect at the web and maybe we can even do a, a live digital loop. Ah, that would be uh, that would be awesome. That would solve some of the technical issues we had today. Uh, last thing, I remember you also something another quote you said, and I just wanted to hear about that before we leave you go. You said, "Don't be boring." Uh, you you repeated that many times. Don't be boring. So is that something <laughs> that you still believe in? I still I still believe in that. But you know, lately what I've I've been I've been really telling people is that look, everything comes down to math, and everything comes down to data. I have a really uh, a, a cool quote that I've kind of been sharing that says, "If you can't add, you can't multiply." And what I mean by that is that if you can't add people to your vision, if you can't add people to your goals, there's, there is no way you are going to be able to multiply it across an enterprise. You need to embrace what's difficult because if it's difficult for you, it's difficult for your competitors. Oh, that's an awesome quote. <laughs> that's an awesome quote. Thank you. That was not boring, actually. So sorry, I went from don't be boring or be your own caffeine. That was another one that I really loved about you. So, Ramon, thank you so much. And we do apologize for those who are watching the show. There were some technical difficulties, so you'll see some edits uh, uh, on the live feed. Uh, and you'll see also some edits when you listen to the podcast. All the links are, uh, that are um, related to Ramon will be on the blog uh, very quickly on the digitalloop.co. We'll have a lot of links. We'll have also a few videos of Ramon. You'll see him how energizing he is, is on stage. And for those who are actually looking for a great speaker, just look at these and you'll find that he is an amazing guy. So uh, on that, uh, I'm not going to have pizza tonight. It's almost time for my beer here in London at uh, 6 p.m. <laughs> And it's actually very, very hot in London, which is extremely rare. And I'm, I'm on the last floor of a building, so it's even hotter with the computer and everything around me. So, guys, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Ramon. Out of here. <laughs> bye, 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 guys. See you all next week. Bye-bye. Yeah. Cheers. Bye.